Hello again and welcome to Interview with DJ Nocturna. I'm uh, sitting here with an uh, amazing, talented guitarist. <laughs> there he goes. Uh, is it well? <laughs> I have to say the guitarist, right? With the many, uh, with the many, yeah. <laughs> the talented guitarist, artist, um, God, singer, <laughs> everything else of the Dandy Warhol and the founding founding member as well. And with now mm -hmm. his uh, project, Pete International Airport. I got Peter yes. Holmstrom on the show. Thank you so much for joining me, Peter. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, Very cool. And thanks for the kind words. Um, oh, you're so uh, humble. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, I, I have to say, you know, I'm I'm like totally blown away by this. Uh, the, the third, this is the third album, right? From, from Pete International. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the title. It felt like the end of the world. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, did. I I foolishly thought I I was worried that my record wasn't going to come out in time um, for that title, but unfortunately, the world just keeps uh, <laughs> keeps feeling like that. So oh, yeah. uh, you're right about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to talk well, to you about some of these songs in here. I mean, they just blow me away. You know, I've been listening to them. And thank you. Um, First of all, let's let's start off with with the you know I know you you right now you you still live in the same place that you've been mm -hmm. staying in there for a while now Portland, right? Yeah. yeah, Portland, Oregon. Since how long ago you would you, I mean you, you didn't grow up there, right? I know you. I I was not born here, but my family moved here when I was seven, oh, okay. and and then and then we we lived here for three years before moving away and then coming back. And then I went off to college and uh, a couple lived a couple for a couple of years outside of Portland. But I just came back, kept coming back. Yeah, yeah. I guess there's something so, for you there. You know, they say when yeah, people, like like me, I I'm in Hawaii and I seem to still mm. be here, even though there's other places <laughs> I would like to live one day. And I would say one day. <laughs> one day, yes, exactly, one day. <laughs> but. Uh, Gosh, I know so many people in Portland. I haven't even gone there, believe it or not. I haven't been there yet. And I really want to go. I got some DJ friends up there and friends, you know, just everywhere. But uh, yeah, it's such a, but, you know, you, you the Dandy Warhol is an amazing band as well, you know, and you're, and you're one of the founding members of the band. Yeah. And, uh, yes. It's still going strong. Mm -hmm. and, um, yes. But I know you, you, you branched out in doing this project right and yeah i i tended to do other things just to i don't know like the the dandies are it's a collaboration between you know courtney and and the rest of us and so if i want to try things that he's not interested in i need to go right. outside the band and yeah. i can then bring stuff back in and okay. i i think that's been very healthy for the band and I, I think, uh, you know, the Danny Warhol is, has been very successful from the very beginning. You know, you guys got signed right away, right? I I would say that was right away, right? I mean, some... It's, people... It was it was quite quick, yes. Uh, yeah. So you've been yeah. so successful. And I could see that, you know, that there's good energy there between all of you. And yes. even you right now. I mean, just just the way you're talking to me right now, I could, it's good energy. Mm -hmm. You're yeah, very humble, humble in very many ways. And... Oh, well... <clears throat> I I try and live up to the opportunities that I have been lucky enough to um, be presented with. And uh, I know it's like, there's far more talented people that have not achieved the same success that I've, I've been lucky with. So, you know, I know. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It's, it's a strange business. It's got nothing, not necessarily everything it has to do with talent and, and, um, uh, anything really it just seems so much as luck and just being in the right place at the right time so yeah trying not to squander that i know yeah i mean some people are just lucky i mean that's just the way it is i don't know i can't explain those things you know myself mm. yeah <laughs> but, I, but i know you're also a very talented guitarist and uh, i know you have a collection <laughs> the i try not to think of it as a collection it's it's the, it's my tools yeah, yeah. Um, you ever like uh, thought about? I mean, have, you have given them away to to some people, right? I'm sure you get say if you don't want it anymore, or 
It's not like you don't want um, it. I've, I've sold some and um, I've just to, essentially to make room yeah. um, for, for other ones and for other things and just stuff I don't use or didn't connect with in the, in the first place. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's, I don't know. There's there, I, there was definitely some things that I got as part of a collection and then they ultimately don't get used and they're the first ones to go. So oh, oh, that's how you do it. Then if you, if you don't use it that much, that means you, you have a favorite and you, you tend to use your favorite more, right? Yeah. And there's ones that are for studio use only that just are, are the ones that I gravitate to for different sounds. And then there's what I play live. And sometimes the two are, the same you know yeah it's always different though yeah do you, do you have any um uh special you know musicians that you in, you're inspired your guitar gu guitarist that you uh oh absolutely yeah um um for me it's always been daniel ash from love and rockets Bauhaus. um oh. uh he's just such a cool like in motorcycle. innovative <laughs> hmm? motorcycle man <laughs> yeah um and uh you know will Sargent from echo and the bunnyman um and uh then like kevin shields the whole my bloody valentine kind of sound soundscapes and yeah you know textures yeah you know um Daniel Ash has been to Hawaii, DJ. Yeah, yeah, he DJ. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And we cool. we, we talked about um, some of the songs, you know. And he he was just telling me things, and then that's when I found out he rides a motorcycle and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought, yeah, glasses and everything, just the way that he has those big glasses, you know, kind of inspired inspires me to to have one of those. I love glasses. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was he was always the the coolest looking guy. Right. Like, yep. So this project, I know you've got yeah. some in incredible singers in here as well, collaborations with them, and mm -hmm. and the album was um was taken from, I mean, Pete International Airport came from one of the songs, right? Uh, yeah, it came from a dandy song. Um, and more than more than that, it was um. I when we were making uh come down um the engineer Tony Lash had recorded me just making a bunch of noise with my pedals and he had titled that track Pete International Airport. Oh, is it because of the noise like it sounds like an er Yeah, I w it uh. it sounded apparently it sounded like well it kind of does sound like planes taking off and landing. Um so he titled it and um, I'm I'm thankful for him to for giving me a, a name for my uh, solo endeavors. <laughs> no, it's a great it's a great name. I mean, uh, it's, it's such a, it really is. Um, yeah. Everybody likes the airport. It's kind of moving all the time, right? Yeah, it's and just the travel and the the um, just getting yeah getting to go new places. Yeah, it's absolutely. I definitely look look and, uh, at it that way. Yeah, I kind of believe in those things. You know, when you name um something like your name or your like your DJ name, for example, I'm nocturnal. So I'm always dark. Mm -hmm. I guess I I could never mm -hmm. play in the daytime, but not <laughs> <laughs> I still do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, th this is the third. This is the third album, right? It felt like the end of the world. Yeah. And I know, I, I know you wrote this during the pandemic a lot of it yeah I definitely like all all the recording happened during the pandemic some of some of the ideas started before that but but most of it really came together like starting in like early 2020 yeah i i noticed um i don't know if i'm if i'm right or wrong but i know there's a lot of water themes going on there you know fluid fluid fluid, fluid you know? Yeah, fluid, fluid flex. Yeah, uh, yeah, there, there is, and I, yeah, sea of eyes. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's why I wore the shirt. It's the sea of eyes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> sea of eyes for those who don't know. <laughs> Somebody gave this shirt. One of my friends gave this shirt to me. I really don't know what's where it's from, but um, I think it's some one of those things. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure either, but but I like the way it looks. And yeah. I I love that song, Sea of Eyes. And isn't that the where the, where the name of uh there's something on that song? What what, what did you say about that song? Oh, there's there's a, a spoken sort of fairy tale poem that's at the end and it's it's whispered underneath like the sort of outro music and you so you can't really make out any of the words but that's okay. it's titled it felt like the end of the world okay. and um it just fit with the how i was feeling and um not that it was the end but it, that it was like it's the well it is the end of something but it's also the beginning of something else mm -hmm. and and so it wasn't it wasn't the end of the world in a really negative way but just in a in a in the sense that it's a change right, right. Um, and that whatever is next will be interesting and you know that as well kind so kind of hopeful then is it, the album that, that's, kind, that, that's how i sense it yeah that's i mean yes exactly it's kind of, I, I don't I don't feel like my music is is I mean it's it has a darkness to it but I don't think it's it's super like yeah absolutely it's not depressing darkness it's yeah, like I agree <laughs> absolutely yeah I, I it's so weird hard to talk about but yeah um, it's kind of transformative in a way right mm-hmm that's I mean we're constantly transforming ourselves so yeah yeah you know one of the things i i don't know if you if you noticed this too but during the pandemic you know i mean everybody was had to stay home and that kind of stuff but one of the things i, I noticed is that people when you see them after having seen them for two years it seems like they accelerated in age <laughs> i don't know if some, you... some, yeah some people definitely did um i mean it everybody's experience during during those years was was very different um i for me it's like there's so much of it was incredibly positive um oh yeah, yeah. i i got to i got to put all my efforts into just working mm -hmm. and there was no like so many distractions that normally happen just were unavailable so it was long periods of being very productive yeah and um yeah it was kind of fantastic. Yeah. The the only concerns was the the rapidly draining bank account and <laughs> um, and well you know and what, what everything else that was going on in the world. But yeah, I mean, I there, tried to not not pay too much attention. Yeah, there was no concerts. You couldn't do all those things, and yeah, but there were good things. You're right. Yeah, for me, I started my 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 uh, my Zoom, um, you know, my YouTube channel. Because mm -hmm. everything, everybody was just couldn't meet up, so there yeah. was a good thing. And you, I met some good people, interesting people, communications. Yeah. yeah. So, um, that's yeah, it's wonderful. So, how tell us about the collaboration here? Because I know you've got some great singers here, um, especially in Nick <clears throat> in is that there? Um, uh, next to Ken is uh, um, Lisa L from Dark Horses. And um, she's she's on my, the last record as well. Um, and I just um, I, the first time I heard any about them was a song that that Robert from Black Rebel had sung with them. And so I instantly knew they were worth checking out. And we played a festival, a traveling festival with them in Australia. And, and Day oh. one, I just walked up and introduced myself and have been friends with them ever since. Beautiful. It's and a beautiful song. Yeah, Lisa's fantastic. She's got a beautiful voice and 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 writes incredibly cool melodies and and, and lyrics. Um I, I know you mentioned about the, the use of repetition. Yes. There is a repetition visually and sonically in, in the in this album, right? The always the use of, yeah the use of, i mean uh, uh, there 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 is in music generally anyway like there's there is a, a lot of repetition yeah. um 
I like the the tranciness of that and um just and I mean even like day one with the dandies it's like that's what we we would do we would find something that sounded good and and play it for as long as we could before we had to change or or you know do something else yeah, and then you mentioned here that and the use of limitation and boundaries. So I know uh, so, so that's somehow connected to to the period of that when you wrote this song, right? Because we were we did have limitations in some ways, right? Yeah, always. Yeah, yeah. So there's, I can see that connection there. It's it it helps to um, if you don't set some boundaries, it's hard to. Uh, um i mean it's hard to have a focus for a record you know um yeah right it'll be all over the place in other ways yeah, yeah and and you also have to break those boundaries if necessary because the songs sort of you know they have they have lives of their own and you have to follow what they what they dictate um and so sometimes you get things that are maybe a little bit a little bit out of what you intended but the song is better because of that. And maybe the whole album is better because of that. So did you write the lyrics for all of these or did you collaborate with someone? Oh, no, 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 no. I, do, I, do, I, I like, I think it's much better when when the singers write their own lyrics. Um, I, it, it makes it more exciting for me to be, it makes it so I can actually listen to, to the things when they're done. Yeah. Um, the collaboration is, is, is very, very important. Um, I don't. It, I don't think it would be nearly as interesting if I did it all by myself. Yeah, it's always good to have other people. Yeah, it's a yeah. Definitely. It goes places you'd never, you'd never do it on your own. You know, it's like the where Lisa took next of kin. I was not. That is not what I thought that song was going to be, and it's so good. Yeah, yeah, it really is. I mean, so many of them, Sea of Eyes, it's just like, oh my God, you can listen to that. All. I've been trying to, I keep listening to it because I'm trying to find that, that you know, where's that part? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you can't, you, you can't hear it. It's, <laughs> um, Whisper. <laughs> and I'm trying if, to in the, in the, um, the, the vinyl record in the gatefold, it's the, I think about half the poem is, is written out. So maybe all of it, I can't. I'll have to go look. It's been a bit. <laughs> and and this this whole album, the the guy who mixed it, you know, I, mm -hmm. I know Jeremy, right? It's mixed yeah. by Jeremy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And um anything, anything and the the one who mastered the album, Dave, Dave Coley. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. There I I've worked Jeremy has mixed every record that I've done. Um and then Dave Cooley's been has uh has mastered the last two. Um, he, they, Jeremy is uh, is also another essentially just a, an, another collaborator. Like what he brings to it is not just mixing. It's like he's he's like co-producing it and adding so much. Um, and again, because like he just. <clears throat> he takes it in different directions, just what what he's influenced by um, than I than what I would ever do on my own. How would you um, so? You know, you you being a you know like a rock star, right? You are a rock star, well known rock star. In the, yeah. uh, so, in your opinion in, or experience, what would you say um, is a good thing about being a rock star? And what do you think is not, is not is not a good thing being a rock star? <laughs> I I think that term is so overused now. Um, that I mean, it's certainly not what it used to mean. Mm -hmm. It's like nobody gets away with what rock stars used to get away with, and I think and there's not that kind of money really being thrown around, and um, it's just it's very different. It's a different world. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I've never really been completely comfortable with that idea. So, just happy to be a mu musician, a songwriter, 
whatever. Yeah, you're like just a humble. You're just a humble guy. <laughs> you're just a humble guy. I mean, yeah. I mean, you get up on stage and you do your thing, and it's maybe that falls into that rock star thing, but it's not. It doesn't carry over off the stage anymore. Yeah. Do Do you think too much, you, too much work to be done? Yeah. Do, is it? Do you think you you've accomplished? A, a lot of things in life or do you think there's still things that you want to do still um I've, there's way more that i need to do i i'm not done i <clears throat> i've got at least i've got well I'm, i mean all the other projects have things happening and then i've got at least at least another um pete international record um anything I, in the works Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Um, during because during the pandemic, I wrote this like the or came up with the beginnings of at least another record, if not two. Um, and who knows? Those those ideas may just get dropped and in, in favor of newer ideas, or might might get to them. They might not be very good. I don't know. I'll have to go back and check them out. Because I. Um, I know that you know musicians. They write. They can't. They write constantly, right? And they put it aside and they don't release it because they're not yeah. ready to be released or whatever. You must have done many of that, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, I essentially each time I start a record, I I have a I have a folder on a hard drive that's full of song ideas, and I just start going through them, and which whichever ones connect, I'll start working on, and whatever 11 songs are finished or close to finished when it's when it's time you know that's sort of the record yeah it's, or or that's the 11 that fit together in in a certain way that makes sense to me yeah yeah you know the last song here canto della polenda pol uh -huh. polena pol polena song of the figurehead yeah yeah, yeah. That's a new, new territory for me. Yeah, I was just going to, I don't know what, the, I, I was just going to say that and then have you answer whatever you want to say about it. Because <laughs> I, I um, like, okay, that one's a little bit different. What, what should I? Yeah, so that's that's a piece that, um, that's I'm one of the, one of the only things I've written on a piano. Um, and I was at my sister's house when my niece was, uh, I don't know, a few months old. And I was just had her on my lap and I was just sitting at the piano and playing the same, I don't know, little sequence, little chord sequence, note sequence over and over again, driving my grandparents crazy. <laughs> um, but it's just something that stuck with me. And, and I had recorded a very weird experimental version of that later on that was at five different tempos on five octaves the same note sequence and so on the highest oct the highest octave it's going very fast and then the next octave down it's half the speed next is half that so the full cycle of that would be like 20 minutes long um which is too long for the record so there's an eight minute edit which is the basis for that piece it's just it was more an experiment to see if it worked and it sounded really cool so no it's a nice uh, it's a nice it's a nice song to be in the 11th song on the album yeah. i mean there's a and, it's like it's almost and, like what is and then my 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 friend um, Louise heard it and she goes, "Would you like me to rec uh, um, score some strings for that?" And I, I was like, "Sure, that'd be very cool." So she did that and came up with the idea of a, a double chamber orchestra. So there's there's a French horn in there as well. So because you know I I kind of looked it up and find out what what the song means, "Song of the Figurehead." Yeah. Yeah. So. I know you know you mentioned that musically this record started as an obsession with the bass tone of the Cure's Fascination Street, right? Yeah. So I was, I was thinking, okay, the first one that came to my mind was the figurehead of the, the Cure song from yeah, uh -huh. 
um, you know. Um, I know that the sort of accidental, perfect little bookend <laughs> to, to the to the record. I know it's it's great. And that's one. Of, that's my favorite song from pornography. Mm, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so I, I felt like I, I felt the connection to this. Oh, wow. I love that one, too. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful album. I, I, I hope, um, and I'm pretty sure that something else will come out of this. It will be connected. Because it seems like your songs are connected to something, you know. And they're always yeah. It's, the you know, the it's now is kind of the hardest part, which is just getting people to hear it. Um yeah, because there's so many people putting out records, and there's so many good records, and um, I think ninety percent of Dandy's fans don't know that I have another project. You know, oh, and how and how how do you get to how do you tell them that you know with all the different al algorithms on social media, it's like that doesn't work to just use the Dandy's social media. So <clears throat> something will happen. Oh well, I just have to play, play, keep playing it and playing it in the radio station. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm happy to put it out there, you know, um, play it. Yeah. It's great, it's beautiful, you know. Thank you. It has yeah. a, it has oh. a side to it, and I love that. I mean, who doesn't? Mm -hmm. And um there's there, it's it's smart. It's it's uh it's deep and you know, you have to you, you can tell there's a lot of uh, depth into the music. It's not just something yeah. thrown out there, you know. I mean, there's depth. Well, I have to. I have to make the music as enticing as possible to get people to want to sing on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 I wish I could understand. <laughs> I, I love it. Yeah, I, it, it, it flows. It flows really well. Mm. And with all this collaboration, you know, I know you, 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 you collaborate with Rachel Goswell. On mm -hmm. the Tic Tac song, and the, the album's coming out, and it was out in Little Cloud Records, right? Yes, and that's a remix yeah. there as well. Yep, and I got my my first record is out on vinyl on on Little Cloud too. Oh yeah, and you got this on vinyl as well, right? Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So glad you did that. Yeah. Wow. So congratulations on this great album you know i'll be sure to play it uh, as often as, as as i can <laughs> thank you very much wonderful yeah and uh so in, anything going on anything happening for the dandy warhol um yeah we have uh um we will be putting out a new record next year um that we have a one single that's out already um that we just did the sort of pre-sale for the uh, vinyl seven inch of um and yeah we'll be doing i'll be there'll be a couple more singles and and touring next year and mm -hmm. ho hopefully uh hopefully it connects you never know what 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 people are gonna like mm -hmm. we we tried to mix it up a little bit this time and um with the songwriting process we we chose to start with guitar riffs like rock kind of rock or punk kind of riffs as opposed to just chords and melodies um it still sounds like the dandies but it's got a little bit of a harder edge a lot more guitars yeah you, know, you super, have a single. super fun to write sorry there's a single with debbie harry right i uh, there's a remix of that song that's out yeah um that it's a, a beautiful beautiful remix by uh, nala um hmm. a, somebody told me re like courtney told me recently it's either up for a grammy or it's up to be wow it's a sh in a short list to be nominated for a grammy or something which is amazing um i don't yeah i won't i won't believe that one until i hear it officially <laughs> but um I'm probably spreading rumors now but Hey, why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah, we did a, we got, we got Debbie Harry to sing on a song of ours. That's just, I can't believe that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, she's, I mean, that's wonderful. Gosh. Yeah, I, I love the that's still seventy. Still have to, yeah, I have to pinch myself all the time about that one in particular. <laughs> So if anybody wanted to um, 
check out the music of uh, Pete's International Airport. Uh, I know you mm -hmm. have a you have a link. It's called a link tree. Yes. You guys just have everything. You know, you, so much. You click on this, and you know everything now is like you just click on it and you there you are, right? Yeah, uh, and it it should be it should be available like everywhere for streaming purposes. Otherwise, um, you know, Bandcamp, um, it's available um, to purchase and mm -hmm. uh, in digital or vinyl. Um, I know we're going to make CDs at some point, but we still haven't gotten around to it. And so yeah, it, and it, the is Peace International Airport going to tour as well, you know, separate from the Danny Warhol? I, I really hope so. Um, I don't have a band at the moment, um, and I don't know how I'm going to go about doing the live version. I keep telling myself it's going to be sort of a an electronic remix version of of the band, of the record. Um, but I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. But I like the idea of, of of giving myself a new challenge, which means in this case working with synthesizers and drum machines and yeah sequencers i don't know uh, yeah, yeah that might work yeah is Maybe it something different yeah is there a place you you would like to visit like down in the in asia or uh well yeah absolutely yeah i i pretty much want to go everywhere but i would love to go to japan oh yeah yeah that, oh yeah that would, uh, I would, I would very much like for this whole project to connect with in with with the Japanese, so I can go there. Do you like Japanese food? I do. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> I've I like Japanese food, the culture, the clothing. The, oh yeah, yeah, yes. The sushi. Do you eat raw fish and stuff like that? I I I'm I don't anymore. I it used to be my favorite kind of food. Now I'm vegan, so. Uh, oh, okay. no more sushi for me but there's an amazing like vegan japanese restaurant here that i go to oh, yeah, quite yeah, often yeah, but japanese is my favorite as well i mean we i live in hawaii we have, japanese is like number one <laughs> you know we yeah. got all over the place fresh mm -hmm. everything yeah fresh. very very fresh yeah okay <laughs> well you know thank you so much for for joining me and um uh, if people want to check out the music of course it's on the you know there's um there's a link tree, Pete International Airport and Bandcamp as well. And the album is going to be released on Little Cloud. It was already released. Little Cloud, I keep saying yeah. it's going to be, but it's already been Little Cloud uh, Records. Uh -huh. It felt like the end of the world, LP um, and vinyl, available on vinyl as well. And uh, yeah. Well, I'll be sure to play it as often as possible. Get it out there. Thank, it, it, it should thank you be out so there. much. Everybody should be listening to it and trying to figure out if they can hear the whisper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. You know, I was going to ask you, yeah. what is your sun sign? Uh, Scorpio. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought that. Actually, <laughs> my my birthday was was yesterday. So. Oh, okay. Happy happy belated birthday. You oh, know, thank I you so that. much. I thought that. You know, I had a feeling it was Scorpio. <laughs> I really did. I really did. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me, and uh, congratulations on this. And I we look forward to more. And big shout out to uh, Shameless Promotion PR Shauna. She's the best. Yeah, she's she really fantastic. Is. Wonderful. <clears throat> Great. Right. Well, thank you.